Now you see, you think it's just a regular page, it's not. It has magnets underneath there. So you can see, see it has magnets, okay? It's not falling out, it's real. We have magnets on there, in there. <laughs> because I want to make little booklets to go on top of it and this book, little booklets, you know, you can put everything you want in there. So, to do this, and you know the magnets have thickness, so to do that, you, you're either going to use foam adhesive that's going to be crazy expensive or you can use some leftover chipboard which I am going to use. So what you're going to do is, first, just take your um, glue, I'm using glossy accent, and um, figure out where you want your magnets to go. Since I already have two magnets there, the magnets autom automatically just wants to go where the previous one goes. Okay? So, glue it down. And try to center paper and see where the two magnets um, approximately will be. Because you do not want to mess it up. Let me ink up the address real quick. The reason that you are, you are remembering or constantly checking where the magnets are is because you don't want to put your chipboard over the magnets, right? So now I am going to just cut some chipboard strips. Just gonna you can use paper trimmer, chipboard trimmer. I have one, but I'm too lazy to use it. I'm too lazy to take it out. So I'm just going to use scissors. It's a lot easier. Just cut some thin strips. They do not have to be perfect. You know, they don't have to have straight edges. They don't have to look good. They don't have to be perfect because you're just going to put them on the back. Nobody's going to see it. And now, go ahead and check again where the center is. Remember it in your mind. And then we're gonna um, put chipboard on top and on the bottom here. So it covers even more areas. Like this. It's, what is it, tedious, but mm, it's worth it. Definitely worth every second. Because you do not, since like the magnet have thickness, you do not want your paper to be flat, right? You want it to have the same thickness. And a foam adhesive, like I said, is too expensive. It's like you're using, what, $5 just right here. And I don't think it's worth that. Okay, and I'm going to cut two very thin strips at the edges here. Just so... Um, Like that. Okay. This and now you have a um, elevated piece which is perfect that matches the um, magnet perfectly now, of course if you use different magnets it's going to have different thickness and whatever so um, add the chipboard layers as many as you want to match up the layer of to match up the thickness of your magnet my magnet is only about 16 of an inch thick it's just like one layer. It's the exact same as one layer of my chipboard right here. So yeah, that's the reason that I am uh, only using one layer of chipboard. And after I put on there, I will I will go ahead and burnish everything together. You could use wet adhesive for this. But I still think the dry one will be better because I do not want to warp anything 
I don't want this chance. I don't want to give anything, any chance to work on me. Okay? So that's the reason why I'm using dry adhesive throughout my mini album. Make sure you center it as much as you can. I'm just eyeballing it. Okay. Now, burnish this really, really well. You do not want it to come apart. Don't burnish the center because you will get the circle mark of your magnets. Just burnish the sides. Okay? So now you have two sides that both have magnets in the middle. And I'm going to now go ahead and make a little booklet out of the um, craft cardstock. I'll be right back and I'll go grab my card cardstock first. Okay, now I've cut out some um, paper square, not squares, paper rectangles and some strips. These rectangles measure three and a half and four, three and a half by four. And these little strips measure three and a half by one inch. All right, and I'm going to put this paper strip as a binding on this side. It's shorter than this, so it won't show. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and bind, us, bind them up. And uh, if you have a paper uh, scoring tool, it will be really handy right now to go ahead and score those paper strips. But if you don't have one, it's okay. You can use your ruler and your foam footer, but I'm going to use a scoring tool. I'm just going to score them right in the middle. I'm not going to give them any um, space in between those two flaps because um, there's no point. My intention is just to, you know, this booklet is just for tiny photos and um, and journaling. They're not going to, I do not intend to make them to put bulky embellishment in there. So it's okay not to give any space between every this two flap. You don't need a quarter inch or any inch of space. Make sure you burnish this strips. And if you want to, you can of course go ahead and taper every strip and I am going to do that. Okay, burn, just not burnish to taper it. I mean, did I say burnish? I mean taper. You can taper the end of every strip. And then I'm going to find this together now. Really simple. Just take your adhesive and I uh, don't think, yeah, this half an inch isn't gonna work. So I'm going to use this quarter of an inch adhesive. I'm just gonna put one strip and I'll be fine. And you know, it's okay. Don't put it next to the fold, okay? It's one thing that you always need to remember is do not put anything next to the fold. Try to center it as much as you can. Burnish this baby up. And then you're going to put another piece on top. Try best to make sure they overlap. This two, not overlap. This two piece are you know about the same when you put them together, so they don't have this weird thing sticking out on sides. And we're going to put another piece. I'm only going to make three pages because too many. You, you don't need too many because three pages already gave you six sites to put photos and to map photos on to put journalings so three pages will be enough all right you don't need like 
tens and thousands of pages on this little booklet. And then try your best to make sure that they are at the same place on the sides because we want it to look good, right? And then put another piece of paper stock on top like that furnish them. Now the inside is going to look like this. If you don't mind about the strips, we can just, you know, ignore it and put a pattern paper on top of it. But if you don't like how the strip is look like that, um, you can go ahead and put more paper curve stuck in there and to cover it. But I'm not going to do this because because the, um, there are no um, width here at the fold. So any bulkiness to it, it just will just make this harder to close. So I'm not going to do that. And instead, I am only I'm going to make a closure closure for this. And the closure is going to be um, ribbons. Let me go ahead and grab some ribbons. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just going to use a very vintage, simple, cream color stretchy ribbon get stretchy for this and what you want to do is because we are going to put a pattern paper on top of it and I want it to and of course to have this closure right and it's stretchy so you don't really need much to hang out you know hanging out I'm gonna just do it like that long that should be enough and um, you can use either dry adhesive or hot glue for this and I am actually going to use hot glue just to make sure it will always be in place go ahead and use your bone footer to pat it down to get rid of the bumpy hot glue so you don't get this extra raise when you put your pattern paper on. Okay, now I'm back. I'm back um, with the inside covered, but I left the back side blank. The reason is that we're going to put the magnets on there, okay? Now to do that, it is very, very simple. Let me show you. First, just put those two magnets on there where you want it to be, okay? And because it's really strong, you don't want to put adhesive on there and put this back and peel it because it's not going to peel it off. <laughs> so we're going to mark the back side where the magnets are. And how are we going to mark it? It is extremely simple. Let me just show you. Just take anything, any paint, any paint, literally any paint you have. You're just going to put your paint on. This is not a stripe. Okay, you're just going to paint your paint. Paint your paint. You're just going to put your paint on a magnet. And then put it on there. Smush it real hard. Now you've got two markings. They're not going to be really visible to you, but they're really visible to me. Okay? And um, now. Put a dab of adhesive on there. Put your magnets on. And that's the exact place you want the magnets to be. And we'll do the same thing with the chipboard. Alright, we're going to cut them into pieces and layer them around the edges and then put our pattern paper on top. But we're going to do it together again. Now 
now we know where the magnets are we don't have to worry about leave the center open or whatever you know because we know what it is where it is and we just have to leave where the magnets are open just again dry adhesive because we want to you know cover our pattern paper right so You don't want to use dry uh, hot glue for pattern paper because that will leave the, the hot glue will leave the tracks and um, give that uneven look. And we don't want that since it's already really uneven with uh, the trim underneath there, right? But we love the trim, we need the trim. We need a closure. I am going to do this uh, different thing for the back side. I'm not going to make a booklet for the back. Instead, I am going to make... Oh, Nelly, I made a mistake. I kind of... Um, but it's okay though. I didn't do the adhesive on the paper, so I put it on to this. You know what? It's okay. I'm going to cut a piece that measures um, three and... Um, Three and a half and four. So he covers the whole place. Sometimes I just don't think clearly enough. And with everything sticking out, like the chipboard and stuff sticking out like that. Of course, right? Of course I'll need a full coverage piece of paper to do this. Okay, Alright, so now we're going to do the back page. And I already cut a circle. It's the same size as the little chipboard clock that you can get from Soft Store. I love her little clocks. I have been using them like crazy before when I just got on her teen because they're just gorgeous. And um, so anyways, just cut out a circle that uh, it's the same size as the little chipboard clock, okay? Because I want to make this a magnetic thing. I want to make it um, to be able to go up, to lift it up, or put it down. I want to make this part as a decoration for your photo. I hope that makes sense though. So for example, just for example, this is your photo. Okay, and you put your photo, you already stick it down there. But I'm going to and now I'm going to but I'm going to make it like overlay kind of embellishment thing so you can stick on there and you know as like a either a secure thing for your photo or it can act like a um, embellishment because this magnet is really strong you don't actually have to stick your photo down so you can just stick many photos as you want down there alright I hope that's making sense though so that's the point of this little embellishment thingy alright so what you want to do is that I am going first to cut out a circle it's the same size as that and I'm going to um, colored it white and I'm going to paint it blue I know I'm only painting things blue because I want to keep it simple I want to keep the whole color thing the same okay so yeah you can paint it other colors if you want to but I'm just going to keep the whole color thing blue yellow and green paint it white real quick doesn't have to be um, really really light you know just to get rid of the craft undertone so it absorbs the blue color better all right and I'm gonna put this on there maybe I should paint it first yeah kind of forgot about it <laughs> needs to paint it blue all right now I love this blue color. I know I've been talking about it forever and ever. I just love it. Love it so much. And I'm going to put on this piece of cardstock. 
You could use um, white adhesive or dry. I'm going to use the good old regular tacky blue for this. It's okay if you get like uh, paints on the inside and whatever because we're going to use flowers, okay, on the inside. So don't worry, it's going to be fine. And then you're, we are going to um, put the magnets on the back. So because you already have magnets in there, just put two on there, and they already know what they're supposed to go. And you just put some paint on them and stick your embellishment down and press your fingers onto the magnet part so now you have the little stamp thingy so you now you know where to place the magnets right it's really important that the magnets are in the right place okay it's really really important so that's why I'm doing this and because the magnet is really really strong it's impossible to just put a dab of glue on here first and then put them down there and then lift them up. It's, you can't do that because the magnet is too strong. You gotta just stick them onto this page, onto the back side first, or they will not be able to lift up. Alright, now I've put it on there and um, just to make it easier for myself to see how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to put a flower on there. Oh, first it's not, it's not, um, my hot glue is not heated, but I'm, we are going to use this wet glue then, still work the same. Okay. And because, um, I still have, um, one cherry blossom, this yellow cherry blossom. And one of the blue flower, blue daisy left. I'm going to put this into a good use. This is going to be like here. Maybe, I'm not sure. Okay, maybe here, like that. Yeah, that looks good. I am going to do this, but I'm going to wait until my hot glue is ready and I'll be right back. Yay, now the glue is ready. Let's go ahead and make it happen, make it pretty. Nice. Like that. Okay. And if you want to, you could um, go ahead and add more and flowers and embellishment to it. I am thinking about what I can do here. And I saw this leftover fence piece. Oops, where did it go? Leftover fence piece from the um, cover. And I'm going to use this one, I think. Because, you know, it's a waste not to. Right? Why not? If I have it, I'm going to use it. And um, I could paint it white, or I don't. I think I am going to paint it white, and I'm going to use inklings to paint it white because inklings not going to give it a full opaque white color like gesso, but it's going to give a strong enough color to give that shine to make it look like it's white color. See, you know what I mean now. Let me get it closer so you can see it clearly. See? It's not like super opaque like gesso would do, but it's still opaque enough. You have so you have that white color. Nice, I love it. If you want to go over the flowers just to clean your brush a little, <laughs> it's not really going to show up on the flower, so don't worry. 
And I love the white shiny fans. White little pretty fans, right? Okay, clean your brush. And I think it looks pretty good. You can still add more things to this if you feel like doing it. But um, I think it looks uh, good enough for now. If I feel like add more stuff to it, I would probably later. But right now I think it looks good enough. And like I said, you have photos. For example, these are the photos, okay? Let's see you have like three photos. You could just do this. Like lift this up and put it on there. See? It'll hold your photo for you and it's not going to fall out. See I'm doing this. It's not going to fall. It's really, really strong magnet. It's going to hold it no matter what, okay? So don't worry about it falling out or anything. You don't have to really glue it on there. If you have magnet, you just need to stuck it on there with your magnets looks good I like it I like you like you and if you want to make it look more complete go ahead and do some dash line around the edges it's only when you think this page is kind of empty you can do this it has some little character to it and I am going to do this my cell phone vibrating <laughs> okay so now I have two dash lines on top and bottom and I think the two dash lines on top and bottom looks pretty good I'm not going to add to the sides so that's how it's gonna look so the second page is done let's move on to the third page <laughs> 